Good evening, everyone. Bienvenidos todos this blessed uh, Monday evening. Going to make another video sharing the word. And it'll be out of the book of Romans, chapter 8. Um, felt it in my spirit to share it in video form. I've been holding this one back for a while. Um, but I'm going to try to relate what the Holy Spirit of Abba Father has brought it into my spirit, the meaning of a scripture uh, out of the book of Romans chapter 8. Again, all glory to Abba Father in the name of his son Jesus. I share the word. Again, this is Romans chapter 8. I'll start verse 1 and then I'm going to be going back and forth so you can have that understanding of this study uh, that I'm sharing today, tonight. Uh, Romans 8 verse 1 states, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Loves, take heed of what the word is stating here. There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not, key, do not walk according to the flesh, there is no condemnation to no one that believes in Christ Jesus, who follows Christ Jesus. No condemnation will come upon them if they no longer walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. The Spirit be being the Holy Spirit of our God loves. That's key. We can all believe in Christ Jesus. Uh, forgive me, loves. We can all believe in Christ Jesus and still walk in the flesh. But you know what? The flesh will be the one condemning us because once we are renewed in Christ Jesus' loves, we're dead to the flesh. This verse right here, Romans 8 verse 1, states it the way we should walk. For there to be no condemnation in our lives, no reprimand, reprimanding, no, no, um, no cause for us to worry that we're going to get punished for walking in the flesh. There's no condemnation, loves. Again, that scripture is amazing, and there's a breakdown or an order in Romans chapter 8 that um, the breakdown or putting, putting it in order states a lot uh, in the, these scriptures. Um, again, that one is one to study loves. Take it to heart. Take it in. Allow the Holy Spirit to dwell within you to die to the flesh. Again, I'm going to state it again, loves. This is the spoken, written word of our God. There is therefore now no condemnation to those to those loves who are in Christ Jesus, who do not, that is key, do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Holy Spirit of our Abba, Father God. That is key, loves. Romans 8, verses 26 to, through 30 states, Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weakness. The Holy Spirit of our God through Lord Jesus helps us. 
loves through this weakness of the flesh. That's the help. That's what we draw down is that help of the Holy Spirit through Lord Jesus in our weakness in this flesh, in this mortal flesh. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought to. The question is why? Why is it that the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness? For we in our weakness do not know what we should pray for. Well, the question is going to be, well, why? why? Why would we not know what to pray for? Because many of times, loves, we are walking in the flesh, believing in Christ Jesus, so we think we're okay. We're okay that we walk in the flesh. We believe in Jesus Christ. So why pray about that flesh addiction? In whatever it is, loves, in whatever it is that goes against the will of God. The Holy Spirit helps us in that weakness. So he's going to pray for us. You know, uh, Sylvia didn't pray for this. She's weak in this area. Lord, Father, help her. Help her in this, Lord. Whether it's unbelief, doubt, uh, insecurity, whatever it might be. Something that the flesh, uh, I feel that, you know, well, no, I believe in Jesus. I, I don't need to pray about it. No. We need to die to the flesh. We need to pray about everything that the flesh can weaken, weaken us and keep us from being uh, in the will of our God. So we will won't have no condemnation. I'm trying to slow down loves. So please forgive me. Again, Romans 8 verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weakness. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself, the Holy Spirit of Abba Father through Lord Jesus himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. With groanings, loves, even in our crying, in whatever that we, we feel that we can't utter, the Holy Spirit will do that for us. And groanings, because it, it pains Him when we're going through a tribulation, an addiction, um, anything, again, loves. It is so broad. I know I don't want to make this video too long. Um, but there's a lot of things that the flesh will stop us from uttering because it's condemning us in the flesh. But we need to die to the flesh, loves. We need to die to the flesh so no condemnation will come upon us. Verse 27 reads, Now he, he being Jesus, Lord Jesus, who searches the hearts, knows what the mind of the Spirit is, the mind of his Father, because he, he being Lord Jesus, makes intercession for the saints, for all of us, loves, according to the will of God. I'm going to stop right there, loves. Pay attention and heed the word. Lord Jesus will intercede, will intercede for us in our weakness, according to the will of our God. He knows our hearts. He knows the mind of our God, of his Father, his God. So he knows the will of his Father. He knows the will of God. He will not intercede with us when we're addicted to lust, pornography, drugs, um, any, uh, any alcoholism, lying, stealing. It, that's against the will of our God. 
And he knows, he knows our heart. He knows also not just the heart and mind of God, but he knows ours. He knows, he knows what we're doing in the flesh. And this scripture states, now he being Jesus, who searches the hearts, knows what the mind of the spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. That self-explanatory loves, let's not, there's, I've heard many, I've seen comments of women and men stating, well, as long as God knows that you're uh, trying. No, we die to the flesh. Verse 8 states it already. It states it. Therefore now, no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Do not let anyone convince you otherwise. Do not allow anyone convince you otherwise, loves, that you can walk in the flesh and you will not be condemned. That is wrong. That goes against the will of our God. That's the spoken written word of our God loves. That's the spoken written word of the God of our Lord Jesus, his father, our Abba Father. This is powerful loves, the word of God. We need to study it, study it, take it in, bring the Holy Spirit down to teach us. Because this world will, will bring us down loves if we follow its teachings and if we follow the ways of the world, it will condemn us, love. It will do that. Now I'm going to read Romans 8, verse 31. I just read Romans 8, verse 27, loves. Again, I'm breaking it down. Uh, verse 1 was the first verse. Romans 8. 26 through 30, that's another breakdown. The next verse is Romans 8, verse 31, and it states, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Okay, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Okay. If God is for us, loves, if we are walking in the Spirit and Lord Jesus is interceding for us and we're dead to the flesh, we're walking in the Spirit, loves. So what then should we say to these things? If God is for us, and that's who's for us, loves through his son, Abba Father is for us, then who can be against us? And the question will be, who? Who, who, who can be against us if we are walking in the spirit? Because the world can be against us, loves, no matter what, in the spirit or not in the spirit. But there's a key. There is a key answer here, loves. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? And that's powerful. I know I'm repeating it, but it needs to be understood. It doesn't mean that people will not come against us. It doesn't mean that uh, weapons cannot come against us because they can. But there's an answer to this. There is an answer in the same chapter, Romans 8. And I continue. Romans 8 verses 33 through 35 reads, Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? Okay. God's elect. 
here in verse 1, it states, No condemnation to those who walk according to the Spirit. Okay, that means we're walking in Christ Jesus. The whole Because we're walking in Christ Jesus and we're dead to the flesh, the Holy Spirit is within us, dwells within us, and He knows our mind. So if the Holy Spirit knows our mind, if it's clean or not clean, if it is in the will of God or not in the will of God, Lord Jesus, as it states in verse 27, now He who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he, Lord Jesus, makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So Romans thirty verse Romans eight verse thirty three states, Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? Well, who can? Lord Jesus is interceding for us through the will of his God. Why? Because he knows the mind. He knows the mind and he'll intercede for the saints that are no longer walking in the flesh. That's why it states here, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Who can be against God? Who can be against our Abba Father? If Romans 8 verse 33 who shall bring a charge against God's elect it is God who justifies justifies he advocates he confirms he defends he will explain he will favor he will pardon that's what Lord Father will do for us. It is God who justifies. It, it.